Now that we know basic methods of solving, we're going to go through a process of learning how to solve specialized forms of quadratic equations. The first method we're going to learn is called completing the square. Now with this we're going to build up to it by starting with a concept called solving by square roots. In solving by square roots, all we're doing is following the simple or order for solving we've used before, which is sad meg. In this we look, do we have any subtraction or addition? And the answer here is yes, we have a minus 36. I'm going to add 36 to each side. And I come out with x squared equals 36. Next, do I have any exponents? And I do, I have a square. So in order to eliminate that, I'm going to take the square root of each side. Now when you take the square root in a solving process, you need to take into account both the positive and negative forms of that number. So when I take the square root of x squared, I simply get x. When I take the square root of 36, I get a positive and negative 6. And at that point, my variable is isolated. And if I were to substitute these values back in, 6 squared is 36, 36 minus 36 is 0. Negative 6 squared is positive 36, which minus 36 is also 0. So those are my two answers. Let's take a look at this in another problem. Here, negative 4x squared plus 60 equals negative 4. Do I see any subtraction or addition? And yes, I have a plus 60. So I'm going to subtract 60 from each side. So I have negative 4x squared equals a negative 64. Next, division and multiplication, I divide by a negative 4. And I come out with x squared equals 16. Do I have any exponents? I do. I'm going to take the square root of each side. And I will be left with x equaling positive or negative 4. And you can plug those back in in order to see that they work. Next one, what happens if we're given an equation that's basically in vertex form? How would we solve this? Well, with groups coming last, our first step is going to be to take the square root of this item. So I'll be left with x plus 2 equals positive or negative 3. In which case I now have two equations to solve. I have x plus 2 equals 3, or I have x plus 2 equals negative 3. And solving these independently, subtract 2 from each side, I end up with x equals 1. On the other one, subtract 2, I end up with x equals a negative 5. These become my two answers. Typically, when we are solving quadratic equations, we are going to have two answers. Very rarely do you have only one, and we will run situations where we have none, but we'll discuss that when we get to it. Now, once we're able to solve by square roots, we need to look at a concept that should have been discussed during Algebra 1 when you're learning how to multiply binomials together, and that is the concept of the perfect square trinomial. Now, in a perfect square trinomial, we build on it by squaring an A plus B item. So if I have A plus B and I square this, this means I have A plus B times a plus b. Now, using my double distribution or foiling method, I end up with a squared plus ab plus ba plus b squared. And rearranging things, I end up with a squared plus 2 AB plus B squared. So when you have an equation or an expression that is quadratic and resemble this, resembles this form, we have a squared term first and last, and then whatever those number, the square roots of those numbers are, multiply them by each other and double it in the middle, you have a perfect square trinomial. An example, if you have x squared plus uh, 18x plus 81. This is simply x plus 9 
squared. x times x is x squared. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 times x is 9x, and double it, you get 18 in the middle. So we have x squared plus 2 times 9x plus 9 squared. So when we have things that resemble this method, this a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, then we're looking at a perfect square trinomial and it can follow the solving method of solving with square roots. Also bear in mind if this had been x squared minus 18x plus 81, you would have had x minus 9 squared. So how do we use this in order to go through and solve quadratic equations a little bit quicker? Well, that shows up here. When you're given equations that are written out, first try and identify if they are perfect squared trinomials. Does this match the pattern of x squared plus 2ab, I'm sorry, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared? And our first one, it does. We have x, we have 2 times 4x, and we have 4 squared. And they're all being added together. So that means that this can be rewritten as x plus 4 quantity squared equals 0. Now solving this square root, we're going by using square roots, we're going to take the square root of either side. We end up with x plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4. And we come out with x equals negative 4. This is an situation where we have only one possible answer. Let's take a look at our second one here. x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals 4. This is x squared minus plus 2 times negative 7x plus negative 7 squared equals 4. So that means I can simplify this down into being x minus 7 squared equals 4. Now, solve using square roots. I take the square root of the left and right hand sides. I come out with x minus 7 equals plus or minus 4. Next, I split this into two different equations. I have x minus 7 equals 4, or I have x minus 7 equals a negative 4. Solving these independently, add 7 to each side, I get x equals 11, or x equals 3. So when you can identify items as being perfect square trinomials, factor it down and then just take the square roots and solve as we did at the beginning. Now, sometimes this is very capable and possible to be done. We just don't have the perfect square trinomial to work with. So there is a way of going through and creating that perfect square trinomial. So how to do a process called completing the square? If I start out with an equation, x squared plus bx plus c equals 0, let me put that in here. In order to complete the square, I need to isolate my ax squared plus bx terms. So I'm going to subtract c from each side. I come out with x squared plus bx equals a negative c. Now in order to complete the square, what I need is to have... I need to add in a term, and it's going to be half of b squared. Now, if I add something to the left-hand side of an equation in order to keep the balance, I also need to add it to the right-hand side of the equation. And what this allows me to do is to rewrite my equation as x plus b over 2 squared is equal to negative c plus b over 2 squared. Now, the right-hand side we're going to be able to combine because they will be like terms, and then take the square root and subtract the b over 2. Now, this is nice looking at it in theory, and that's going to help us moving down the road, 
but in and of itself is a little bit challenging. So let's see it at work in some problems. So I have x squared minus 10x equals 24. And what I'm going to do is solve this by completing the square. First thing I need to do is I need to take half of my b value and square it. So I'll end up with x squared minus 10x. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5, so let me write that in, plus a negative 5 squared. And whatever I add to the left, I also add to the right. So I'm going to add a negative 5 squared over there. So what I have is x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 24 plus 25 is 49. Now, convert this into a factored form. So I will come out with x minus 5 quantity squared equals 49. Now go through, take the square root of each side. I get x minus 5 equals positive or negative 7. Now, two equations stem from this. x minus 5 equals 7, or x minus 5 equals negative 7. Solving these independent, we have x equals 12, or x equals a negative 2. And these become the two solutions for this problem. Let's look at it again on the right-hand equation. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 6x. Half of 6 is 3, so I'm going to add a 3 squared to the left, but also I'm going to add a 3 squared to the right. So I end up here with x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals negative 5 plus 9. Simplifying, I get x plus 3 quantity squared equals 4. Now if I take the square root of each side, I come out with x plus 3 equals positive or negative 2. Now I have two equations, x plus 3 equals 2, or x plus 3 equals a negative 2. Solving these independent, I have x equals negative 1, or x equals negative 5. So I've gone through, I've learned how to solve using square roots, demonstrated how to apply this and what a perfect square trinomial looks like, how to build perfect square trinomials and to move forward. Now this process of building the perfect square trinomial is also one that can be used to convert from standard form into vertex form. If I'm given an equation such as x squared or y equals, sorry, x squared plus 6x plus 5 and I want to turn this into vertex form, what I do is I pull out, I have x squared plus 6x inside of parentheses and then the 5 outside. Now in order to make this perfect square trinomial inside the parentheses I take half of b and square it. So I'm going to add 9 inside of the parentheses. But in order to keep balance I then have to subtract 9 outside. And what this does is it allows me to have x plus 3 squared minus 4 being equal to y. And I have now gone from standard form into vertex form, knowing that my vertex is at negative 3, negative 4. It opens up with a y-intercept of 5. So it'll take a little bit of practice to get these going, but take a look over this video, review it again, and be ready to move forward into other parts of Algebra 2.